Welcome to the Attorney Talk Podcast, sponsored by Schaeferman Lakin with your host, Sam Gaylord, disability litigator in the state of New Jersey. In each episode of the Attorney Talk Podcast, Sam has casual conversations about the law with varied professionals throughout the legal industry. You can find this show on all the major platforms, including YouTube, LinkedIn, Facebook, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and on our website, Schaeferman.com. Now here's the host of Attorney Talk, Sam Gaylord. Welcome to Attorney Talk, casual conversations about the law. I am your host, Sam Gaylord, disability litigator in the state of New Jersey and partner at Schaeferman Lakin. And today I have the absolute pleasure of uh, talking with a very longtime good friend of mine, Jim Petrus. Jim, welcome to the show. Thanks, Sam. Appreciate you having me. Oh, listen, I'm thrilled to uh, get you on and and uh, just uh, chit chat uh, before we got started. We were talking about some of the stuff we're going to roll through anyway. So uh, but no, I appreciate you jumping on. And um, before we get into everything else, I, I always like to ask my guests just to sort of uh, mix it up a little bit. Um, tell us something about yourself that many people may not be aware of. Um, I have. Uh... I'm very passionate about a few things. One of them specifically related, uh, actually two of them specifically related to my wife. Uh, she is a insulin dependent diabetic, has been since she was 11 years old. So for many years, she and I volunteered for the American Diabetes Association. And uh, about two years ago, we adopted a rescue dog um, and she had that dog trained to be able to smell her low blood sugars. Um, wow. So as a result of that, I felt a desire to give something back. So I've just joined the board uh, for the Homeward Bound Pet Adoption Center in Camden County um, to be kind of the attorney assistant on the board if they have any legal issues that they need to go through. Um, and it's just amazing what the dog can do. She's so good. That's excellent. Well, what kind of dog? Uh, just a mutt. It, we had oh, the DNA testing. Uh, just a uh, you know, lot of black lab, a lot of, uh, oh, God, there was like seven or eight different things. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, that's fantastic. And and so the training that the dog goes through, how long does that, how long does that go for? Um, it takes the better part of a year. Um, so it's not only training for the, uh, smelling the low blood sugar, but also the training so that she can be taken on a plane. So my wife flies with her everywhere. Um, so she has to have the correct obedience training to, you know, lay down in the airport, wear her service vest. She has to lay on the plane the entire time. She can't get up on the seats. She can't be in a carrier. So it's, she picked up the, the, the scent training very quickly um, it's the obedience training with a young dog. We got her when she was, uh, maybe eight weeks old, I guess. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, the, uh, yeah. And the smell is definitely the lab part yeah. <laughs> as someone who's had uh, nothing but chocolate labs. Uh, I can assure you it's the, the scent is definitely their forte for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Terrific. Well, and it, you mentioned your wife and so how long have you been married? Uh, 31 years. Um, Congratulations. thank you. Yeah. We've got uh, one son, 29 who uh, does IT work. Um, he actually lives in Brooklyn, which my wife doesn't like at all. <laughs> <laughs> Although Brooklyn is wonderful. All the restaurants and the whole community. Yes. She just doesn't like big cities. Like I can I guess you. go into to, uh, Philadelphia, much less New York. Terrific. I got you. I got you. And before we were on the show, you had mentioned, uh, I know that you're an avid golfer. You and I have uh, taken care of that before, uh, but uh, that you do a lot of golfing down in uh, Myrtle Beach these days. Yes, yes, yeah. We've uh, we've had a condo down there for about ten years in the Barefoot Resort in North Myrtle Beach, and part of that was related to the diabetes. We, you know, as a type one diabetic, who's my wife is one year younger than me, so she's had diabetes now for forty six years. Wow. Uh, the possibility of complications are always rampant. Sure. Um, so we decided that we didn't want to be one of those couples who got to age 65 and then you retire and then you don't get to enjoy your retirement. So right. 
she goes down the whole winter and I do the back and forth thing. In fact, I've got a 7 p.m. flight tonight out of Atlantic City. Oh, perfect. <laughs> well, and, and we were talking about it because I had mentioned that uh, my son just got uh, accepted to Coastal Carolina. So I will definitely uh, knock on your door, I'm sure, quite a bit. Uh, we can definitely go uh, play some golf for sure. I would love that. That would be great. So um, I know that you are a Seton Hall alumni. And uh, my notes uh, indicate that you graduated in 90, 1990. Is that right? That is also correct. Yep. Okay. So you were before the new school got built. I was during the construction. Yeah. Yeah. In the, yeah. in the, uh, what, the what they call it, the, the McDonald's building, right? Yeah. So we were, uh, there were the main building and then we were in construction trailers my second and third year. Yep. Yep. Uh, yeah, I graduated. Uh, I started in 91 and my first year was still in the construction trailers. And then uh, my second and third year were in the in the new law school. So uh, at the time, new law school. So, <laughs> so um, tell me what what prompted you uh, to go to law school? Um, when I was in college, I went to the University of Pittsburgh and the first semester of my senior year, I did an internship for Senator John Hines. Oh. Um, so it was a very intense, uh, I did like six hours a week. Uh, I got credit for it. Um, and in finding out what the people in his office made, I realized that my political science degree wasn't going to make me any money. <laughs> and I left without an option, and that led to the application for law school. I had a, a brother-in-law who was uh, uh, an attorney at the time, um, and uh, I knew, you know, what he was doing. So right. um, that kind of is how I got into it. Very cool. Very cool. Uh, now, are you originally from the Pittsburgh area? No, I just uh, I knew I wanted to go away to school and. Pittsburgh fit the criteria of being just far away that I couldn't get home too much, right. but close enough that if I had to, I could get here. And that was right. back in the People Express days when you used to That's fly right. into Newark and you paid for your flight with cash on the plane. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I, I remember that trip yeah. uh, we lived out there a little while as well growing up as a kid so uh a very different city nowadays it's just yes, beautiful it nowadays yeah so well that's great so you are the owner and uh founder i guess owner founder of uh petrus saracino um there's another one right petrus saracino meeks. smith right ben um and ready mix Yep. Terrific. And um, so how long, how long have you now been that firm? Um, I left Cape Art in 98. Uh, Chris joined me shortly thereafter when I went with two guys that had previously left Cape Art. And then he and I broke off from that in 2000. So it started in 2000. I think uh, Ben joined in 03, 04. Right. So about 20 years. Yeah. Yeah. So it's Terrific. been over almost 25 years now. Terrific. And and just so that the audience gets a sense, uh, tell us a little bit about what you specialize in. I handle 99% the defense of workers' compensation claims in the state of New Jersey. Um, our client base um, primarily is municipal entities and boards of education. We do have some private carrier work. Um, where we work for some national trucking companies. We've got a few casinos in Atlantic City. Um, but my personal workload is 95% down in the Atlantic City District Office, which covers Atlantic and Cape May counties. So pretty much, you know, the, the song on the way to Cape May, every municipality that's named in there is one of my clients. <laughs> well, and now I, I'll do a little bragging for you, Pete, uh, Jim. Uh, so I will tell I will tell everyone that I have had the pleasure of being an adversary of Jim for now the better part of well, I won't I won't actually say how many years, um, but for a long time we'll we'll leave it like that. And I have to say that uh, out of all of the adversaries that that I personally have dealt with, Jim is probably one of the best in terms of just knowing his files, being prepared, an absolute, absolute professional, hands down professional. Um, we, oh, listen, it's, it's been, 
it's been an honor and a privilege to to work with Jim. And I say work with, you know, and I know we're, we represent this in different sides of the fence, but uh, to get what we have to get done, done, um, uh, Jim is by far uh, just one of the best, absolute one of the best, no doubt about it. So, and, and, and quite frankly, I have to say that about everyone in the office, um, just real professionals uh, with a, an attitude of just understanding what we're there to do. And uh, it's, it's been a pleasure. Absolutely. So um, I have a question though. So in, in what we do, or just in general, is there something about the practice of law that you would like to see different now than let's say it was five, 10, 20 years ago? Um, well, the biggest difference that's occurred because of the COVID shutdown is the ability to do things remotely nowadays that the vast majority of judges are still doing. And it is by far the most cost effective and time saving tool that has come about in my years of practice. Um, the thing that I like the least is email. I, I used to joke uh, way back when that uh, air conditioning killed the practice of law because we used to be able to shut down the courts in the month of August. Uh, but wow, email is just just a monster. It's you know it's it's a great tool, but like every tool, it can be used incorrectly and. Um, it's just maddening sometimes the, the volume of emails that we get. Yeah, that is, uh, certainly. And, and again, and I'm sure it's from your side of the fence as well, but for us, it's also not only just the email, but it's then and the expectation that there is an immediate response to that email. And then, you know, within 10 minutes, it's like, well, why haven't you responded to my email? Yeah. And part of what I try and do, I, I didn't do it today. I had other things to, to get done, but I generally put my out of office notification on and in that out of office notification, I say I will be working from this time to this time. My plan is to check emails at 9 a.m., 12 noon and 3.30 p.m. You everybody has my cell phone number. If you need me more urgently than the next time that I'm scheduled, please call me and I'll be happy to speak with you about an urgent issue. Otherwise, I'll respond when I next look at my in inbox. So that I don't have that, uh, you know, Pavlov's dog response to the ding of Outlook. Yeah, oh, that, and that you know, it's I got to tell you, that's a great way to word it because uh, I could literally in any given day, literally just sit there at the computer and do nothing but respond to the emails as they roll in throughout yep. the course of the day, and just not hit the high level work uh, that needs to get done. Also, absolutely. Yep. Terrific. So, so in all these years, and you've always done the defense side, right? Yes. I know a little bit, some of the other guys in the office uh, do a little bit of uh, petitioner work, plaintiff work. Correct. We, 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 we try to do a small petitioner practice. The problem is, is that we have so many conflicts with our client base that it becomes difficult. Uh, a lot of times we end up referring them out. Um, you know, I have handled the occasional case for, uh, you know, family members and good friends, but I would say I've probably done less than 20 in my career. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, got to be careful of the friends, family, and freebies. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what, what do you enjoy most? What do you enjoy most about being a lawyer, the practice, what you do? What, what's, what's the thing that brings you the most satisfaction? Um, I actually, the fact of the way that you describe the, um, collegial atmosphere of workers' comp court, I find to be very, very true. There are maybe one or two attorneys that I deal with statewide who shall go nameless that I don't have any pleasure dealing with. But for the most part, everybody I deal with, we all have our clients to represent, but that doesn't mean that we can't um, be cordial to one another. We can't talk about our families, about our favorite sports teams. Um, and I've made a lot of great friends through this that I would never would have made. It's an absolutely wonderful practice to be in. 
Yeah, and I and I completely second that. And the answer too is we were just I don't know if you were at uh, Judge Cherkos's uh, uh, retirement dinner, but um, you know you get a real sense again another professional, someone who was just an absolute pleasure to appear in front of, and who just at the end of the day got it, you know. Um, and with everybody there, it was great. You know, you see people now in person, um, and it's just uh, it, it really is a true uh, a community, a true community. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Terrific. So, so what would you say is the thing that your clients like uh, most about dealing with Jim Petrus or Petrus Saraceno, um, Smith and Meeks? Um, I think it's the combination of knowing that, you know, we, we're five partners, basically. Uh, Rob Fraley is also a partner. Um, and we've just hired two young associates. They know they're getting experience workers comp counsel. Um, and we don't do anything else. Like workers comp is the only area that we practice in. So, um, it's a situation where, you know, I, I've been doing this a long, long time. I like, I actually like training the new associate that we have. Um, to me, it's, it, I, I like the, um, the professorial type of atmosphere trying to teach somebody and mentor somebody. Right. Well, that just demonstrates where you and I are both in our careers because <laughs> yeah. that is something I absolutely enjoy as well. I do a lot of, um, I do it. So uh, with our practice, my practice, I do a lot of union work and I get the chance to uh, go to not just the locals, but to their uh, headquarters and, give lectures on workers comp and social security disability, things like that, just to better prepare people. Um, my, the biggest thing, you know, the sides of the fence is what it is, but I've always found that what, what's upsetting, the most upsetting is that people are provided information only because it's what somebody else was told to that person providing the information. Not that it's right or wrong. It's just that that's, you know, that's what they were told to say that well, this is the way we've done it. doesn't make it right. It's just, this is the way we've done it. And um, so doing that lecturing or doing that teaching that professorial uh, uh, spirit uh, does provide, I think, um, uh, one of the better sort of feelings I get uh, um, in, in the, just in the sense of you can really uh, prepare someone, you know, give them, you know, information being power and, and just have them ready for what they need to deal with for sure. So, um, and it's actually why I started this again. I, I had done this years ago, but uh, to me, the, you know, having the opportunity to just, you know, chit chat with uh, other attorneys and, and talk about, stuff you know whatever not even just necessarily the practice of love but just you know showing people that you know yeah we're lawyers but it's basically one one pant leg at a time just like everybody else so nothing nothing exciting here you know that kind of thing so yeah I mean, there are times when um the the regularity of our practice is nice because i can know like a metronome what i have to do and when i have to do it but that's also a double-edged sword to me because unlike other areas of law, there is no really, really busy time and then some downtime. It's always this straight across, you know, it's kind of like a cosine. It's, you know, it's right by the, by the mean and it just goes slightly up, slightly down, but it's never a gigantic thing one, one way or the other, unless you've got a, an appellate division brief or something like that. Then. And then that's when it really, you know, you really have the up uptick in uh, workload. And I will say, and it's funny that you mentioned that I was, I, it, it actually reminds me, um, as I recall, uh, Jim has a New Jersey Supreme Court decision um, that would be jump, as I recall, uh, where, well, why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, jump uh, was a case that I uh, handled for the city of Ventnor down in Atlanta County, just uh, south of Atlantic City. Um, and one of their employees um, had the job task of going around town and going to all the meters and the water towers to take readings on a daily basis. And during the course of his employment, he decided that he wanted to go pick up his personal mail because he had a P.O. box at the local uh, U.S. post office there. I think it was on Atlantic Avenue, if I remember. 
And on the way back from picking up his mail, he tripped and fell and had a fairly severe hip injury um, that required surgery. Um, we denied it on the basis that he wasn't strictly within the scope of his employment at the time. Um, and I actually won at all three levels. I won in the division, I won in the appellate division, and then it was affirmed in the Supreme Court. Um, and it was, uh, the affirmance was, uh, five to two. There was a dissent, uh, and it was kind of funny because, uh, the, all the towns that I represent are what's, uh, part of what's called a joint insurance fund where they pull their money together to buy a better priced insurance policy rather than going out individually. Yep. So the fund has a solicitor that oversees all of the, the litigation. And I remember the solicitor saying, wow, I, you know, I, I thought we were going to slam dunk this one. You know, I, I was a little surprised it was only five, two. And I, and my response, was, that's what, how good of a job I did. It was that hard of a case that two justices on the Supreme court dissented and we still won. Right. Right. Yep. Um, and ha I've had the opportunity to appear in front of the Supreme Court one time, uh, which was way, way cool, um, except that I did not get a decision. <laughs> we argued the case. So you brief the case, you wait all that time, you get there, seven judges or, you know, we, we had uh, seven judges at the time. And um, um, two or three weeks after our oral argument, I get a letter one little two sentence little letter said we improvidently granted certification the decision at the appellate division stands <laughs> i'm like okay i'm like are you kidding you know uh i couldn't believe it. i'm like i don't because i was excited it was funny because i remember saying to my wife i don't care if i win or lose i'm forever gonna be in one of those books i'm gonna have a supreme court book you know and uh, no not so much <laughs> no not so much uh but it was it was an uh, awesome experience and and so just so that everybody's aware, you know, Jim's being very modest here is that he basically created a very definitive line, um, a, a demarcation that talks about what is or is not compensable. Um, and it's a New Jersey Supreme Court decision. So, um, you know, it's uh, it, it really did set the mark. So uh, congratulations. Thank you. Um, so it, it, you know, going forward, if, uh, if, uh, someone, uh, is interested or wants or has questions, uh, from a respondent's side, how is it best that they could reach you? How do they get in touch with you? What's, what's the best way? Uh, the best way is always an initial email and then, uh, I'll respond, um, you know, with my, uh, cell number. I do work remotely the vast majority of the days. The nice side about my side of the practice is I don't necessarily have to physically be in my office to do my job. I can do it really from anywhere on the planet. Yep. Um, so um, because of that, uh, you know, not driving as much as I used to is, is very much um, appreciated. Um, the years that I spent driving, uh, covering the entire state, especially when the, the firm was first started, uh, I've always lived in the most Southern portion of South Jersey since I've been admitted and going to places like Hackensack and Jersey city are a two and a half to three hour ride. If there's any type of traffic on the turnpike. So right. not having to do that nowadays is wonderful. Sure, sure. Um, and all of uh, Jim's information will be in the show notes. And so everybody, uh, is certainly if you have questions or if uh, any of the people listening uh, work with an insurance company, they should absolutely reach out to Jim. Uh, like I said, uh, he is one of the best. Um, Jim, I want to say thank you. I, I really do appreciate you taking some time out of your day, uh, joining me here on Attorney Talk. It's an absolute pleasure having you. Uh, and I very much look forward to uh, getting some golf in in the next several months down in Myrtle Beach, for sure. Uh, I sure hope so. That'd be great, Sam. Great talking to you. Thanks, pal. All right. You're welcome. You've been tuning into the Attorney Talk Podcast, sponsored by Schaeferman Lakin, with your host, Sam Gaylord, disability litigator in the state of New Jersey. You can find this show on all the major platforms, including YouTube, LinkedIn, Facebook, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and on our website, Schaeferman.com. Thank you for your positive reviews, comments, questions, and for sharing this show with others. 